All right, hi everyone. Let us see this uh, neat revision series second quiz after the postponement. I'm ready to give the test. Okay, so the first question is an anatomy question. This is the anterior segment from the cornea to the posterior part of lens. C is the anterior chamber, D is the posterior chamber, A is the canal of Hanover, that is intrazonular space, and B is the canal of petite. Now C and D contains aqueous, aqueous is formed in the posterior chamber, goes into anterior chamber, then goes outside the eye. So that is true, first statement. D statement is also true, B is canal of petite is true. Now A is wrong, even if you don't know, the zonules are attached at the equator of the lens. The poles are anterior posterior poles at the 360 degree equator. If you divide the lens into half, that is where 360 degrees the zonules are attached. So that is the answer over here. A is attached at the poles is wrong statement. That is the first question. Now you should know that when you throw the light in one eye, the optic nerve takes the impulse, the nasal fibers cross at chiasma then go to optic uh, tract, then it does not go to lateral genital body, it goes to pretectal nucleus. Now both pretectal are stimulated, how? Because the nasal fibers go and stimulate the contralateral pretectal, then temporal optic nerve fibers go and stimulate the ipsilateral pretectal. From pretectal the impulse goes to interdinancy neurons into edinger westphal nucleus. From edinger westphal the third nerve comes, that is the efferent, ciliary ganglion, short ciliary nerve goes by nerve to inferior oblique and constricts the pupil of both eyes by stimulating the iris sphincter pupillae. This is a light reflex pupillary reflex pathway or a parasympathetic pathway. That's why LGB lesions, in LGB lesions the light reflex is absolutely normal because this is a midbrain reflex not a cortical reflex. Pretectal is present in the dorsal part of midbrain, edinger westphal in the ventral part of midbrain. So afferent is one side optic nerve and efferent is bilateral third nerve. All right. Now this is a slit lamp picture, a diffuse slit lamp picture. Z is the iris. You should know this brown. Now this is the lens area. This X is the phacic area, not the aphacic. This is the aphacic area. Means there is subluxation of lens. That can be seen in many syndromes, MATHS, Marfan syndrome, NIRD, absence of iris, T, trauma, blunt trauma, H, homocystinuria, hypolysinemia, S, sulfite oxidase deficiency, Stickler syndrome, secondary to ocular conditions like sclerotic cataract. Now A is true, B is true. Now you will say sir, Marfan's always there is supratemporal subluxation. No, that is not correct. Marfan's most common is supratemporal subluxation, but it can happen anywhere. So B is also correct. Patient complete of uniocular diplopia, yes, because of lenticular astigmatism. Now, if cataract developed, cataract would develop in the fakic area, not in the afakic area. That was a question. That is a wrong statement. A, D is an incorrect statement and the correct answer over here. Most common subluxation in homocystinuria is inferonasal, right? Now many people must be knowing that in diabetic retinopathy there is a new vessels above the iris which become fibrous and pulls retina upwards. Pulling means it can lead to tractional retina attachment. Yes, but sometimes due to traction it can create a secondary tear in the retina and tear in the retina can lead to secondary regmatogenous detachment. So both A and B can be detachments seen in diabetic retinopathy. Of course, A is the common one and B is secondary due to traction. So that is the answer. Many people must have made mistake in this, but D is the answer over here. Now I have given a video just to may prove up or just to show you. See, I'll not pray. I mean, I have to. I have shown the video to uh, give you that if there is a cylinder lens, this lens can be asked. This is the axis on which the lens is placed. These are the lenses which you might have gone to get your uh, refractive error testing. They put on a trial frame like this. This is the objective refraction going on. Uh, first objective uh, to see the reflex and this is subjective going on. We we'll ask the patient whether this is okay for him or not. So in the spherical lens there is no marking like this. 
in cylinder there is a marking because cylinder kept only in one axis here it is kept at horizontal axis that is 0 180 degree and always the cylinder works in opposite to where it is kept so here the cylinder is kept at minus 2 cylinder at 180 degree spherical is working in all the axis so we have all two axes the principal axis in uh, optics so minus 1 is working in both axis minus 2 is kept at horizontal means it will work in the 90 degree so minus 3 in the vertical axis and minus 1 in the horizontal axis both are minus means both axes are focused in front of the retina that is compound myopic astigmatism and vertical is more in front because you're giving minus 3 means you want to diverge more so minus 3 will be more in front as compared to minus 1 that is more converging power that is more steeper that is with the rule astigmatism by definition b is the answer over here so how to identify the cylinder there will be marking on the cylinders in spherical there is no marking in cylinder there will be marking like this in the right there is a c minus one diopter cylinder and this is at which it is kept the axis at which it is kept spherical there is no marking because spherical english we know english basic english spherical works in all the axes all right EV serration is a surgery in which the intraocular contents are scraped out and taken out, leaving behind the sclera shell, optic nerve, and the orbit tissues. Done in suprachoroidal hemorrhage, panophthalmitis, bleeding anterior cephaloma. Enucleation is a surgery in which the entire eyeball in toto is taken out with maximum excision of the optic nerve, leaving the orbital tissues intact. Means uh, even the eyeball muscles are not taken out. They are cut. Only the eyeball is taken out. The muscles are not taken out. Optic nerve is yes taken out because it is done in intraocular tumors like retinoblastoma, choroidal melanoma, which can spread. And retinoblastoma most common spread is optic nerve. Excentration is the answer here, in which all orbital contents are removed up to the periosteum, then in non-responding orbital cellulitis, then in intraorbital extension of tumors, uh, non-resolving uh, uh, orbital cellulitis like mucormycosis then excentration is done everything in the orbit is taken out up till periosteum and vitrectomy is taken out the vitreous that is vitrectomy now third nerve palsy supply third nerve supplies all the muscles in the eye except so and lr so cause the eyeball to go down it is a depressor and lr cause the eye to go out or down and out eye means hypo and exotropia now if the eyeball is already exotropia it is already in abduction position there is no limitation of abduction that is the answer over here and third nerve supply is uh, LPS muscle, levator muscle, so ptosis is there. Third nerve constricts the pupil, just now I told you pupil pathway, so pupil is dilated. Other eye pupil is normal, so difference in pupil is known as an isochoria. So this was the INST question, limitation of abduction is not a feature of third nerve palsy. Achha, quickly if I just tell you about uh, other features in third nerve palsy, the light reflex is absent, even the near reflex is absent. But in diabetic third nerve palsy, which is the most common cause, diabetic hypertension, the pupil reactions are normal because pupil fibers are in the periphery, which are spared in diabetes and hypertension because micro vessel, that is vessel nervosum, affects only the central part of third nerve. So pupil sparing third nerve palsy is seen in diabetes hypertension. Now, if the cornea, this is cornea, this is iris. Iris is adhered to the cornea. Even if you don't know anything, iris is adhered. By the name it says it's adherent. Leukoma means more than two-third of the cornea thickness should be involved in opacity. Nebula means less than one-third. Macula means one-third to two-third. Leukoma means more than two-third or full thickness. And when the iris adheres, then it is adherent leukoma. That is the answer. It can be complication of, cataract, uh, com complication of corneal ulcer. When the cornea is very thin, when the cornea is very thin, what happens iris goes and plugs to the perforated site and exudates come from the iris forming pseudocornea and if there is a healing here cornea is very thin lined by iris and it is scarred so thin cornea but full thickness so leukoma and iris are there that is the leukoma now in pseudocornea also one more complication can occur pseudocornea cornea is very thin lined by iris and if the pressure increases pseudocornea cannot sustain the pressure so the eyeball will bulge Anterior cornea will bulge, that is anterior cephaloma, which can bleed also, that is bleeding anterior cephaloma, for which I just gave you evisceration answer. Here the answer is adherent leukoma. All 
Oh, this is hanging a lot here. Yeah, mostly because of the video, but I wanted to show you the video. Let me see otherwise. All right. Now this is the clinical question. If you see carefully, age is 42, no visual complaints, IOP, both eyes is high, less than 21 should be normal. Anti segment is normal, gonioscopy, ciliary body is seen. Now ciliary body seen means, shawl base line is the first structure seen, then trabeculum meshwork, then scleral spur, that is attachment of ciliary body to sclera, then ciliary body in the iris. See, ciliary body is seen, it means the angle is open. The definition of angle closure is in unability Inability to see more than 180 degree of trabecular meshwork is angle closure. Out of 360 degree, 180 degree or more than trabecular meshwork is seen, that is angle open. Here, ciliary body is seen, it means angle is open. So, it is an open angle spectrum. So, this should be ruled out. A also should be, uh, sorry, C is ruled out because that is an angle closure glaucoma. Now, optic disc inferior neurolateral thin, uh, thin means there is a change in the optic disc which will correspond as a superior visual field defect also. But no optic disc change in the left eye. So there is no glaucoma in the left eye, but the pressure is high. That is ocular hypertension. So left is ocular hypertension, that is true. So B is ruled out, C is ruled out. Even D is ruled out because family angle closure is seen in angle closure spectrum. Only answer left is A. A this pressure is high, optic disc change is there, angle is open, that is primary open angle glaucoma. Left eye angle, pressure is high, but optic disc is normal in open angles. That is ocular hypertension. Who knows what is the meaning of the word primary angle closure? It is the same as ocular hypertension, but in angle closure spectrum. If the angle closure is given, inability to see the trabecular meshwork up till 180 degree, that is angle occludable or closed angle, pressure is very high, but there is no optic disc visual field change, then it is a primary angle closure. Who knows what is primary angle closure suspect? Angle is occludable, everything is normal, pressure is normal, disc is normal, field is normal and PACG is angle is occludable, pressure is high, optic is change present, visual field change present that is primary angle closure glaucoma. This you should know, anisometropia means difference, metropia means refractive error, difference in refractive error is anisometropia, uh, difference in color of iris is heterochromia iridis, there is nothing like difference in axial length, it can happen but there is no word. And there is nothing like difference in visual acuity. But uh, see, there is a definition of amblyopia. Amblyopia, you will say amblyopia means lazy eye. You say lazy eye when the best corrected vision means after giving spectacles, the best corrected vision is not improving. And there is a two line difference between the two uh, eyes. Like one eye is 6 by 60, other is 6 6. You have given best corrected vision in uh, right eye. Still, it is 6 by 60. Left is best corrected vision 6 6. Why the vision is not improving? Maybe there is an amblyopia. Maybe because of squint, maybe because of an isometropia, maybe because of stimulus deprivation. One question I gave you in the specific topics as well about amblyopia. So two line difference between the two in the Snellens chart, that can be the definition of amblyopia. Here the answer is simple, that is the difference in refractive error. And significant is when there is more than 2.5 different 2.5 diapted difference in refractive error, then there is a significant an isometropia. That's the answer. I have 10 questions for you. I hope you have done well. I have seen many people have got good marks. 9, 10 are good. Even 8 is okay here. So 8, 9, 10 are definitely good ones. Keep doing well. Best wishes.